Good morning and welcome to KCPS Homeroom. I'm Justin Robinson and today is for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students. We will start off with reading, then math, then science, a physical education lesson, and finally, intro to Spanish. Hope you enjoy class today and let's get ready to learn with Miss Perry in reading. Hey, it's Mrs. Perry bringing you another reading lesson. So come on in and let's take a look at what you'll be learning today. Today, we will learn about character traits and review our big words from last week, character and setting. Today, you'll be learning about character traits. And that just means you'll be able to tell me what kind of person someone is. But first, let's review those big words from last week. Our first big word from last week was character. Can you say character? And characters are the people in the story. Who was in our story? And our second big word was setting. Can you say setting? Good. And the setting is where the story takes place. Where was everybody? Were they outside? Were they inside? Where the story takes place. Now that we've reviewed those big words, let's learn about character traits. I have a question for you. Are you honest? Do you tell mommy and daddy the truth? I hope so, because that means you're an honest person, which is a character trait. Are you friendly? Do you treat others nicely? Good, because that's a character trait too. Think about your best friend. When you all play games together, are they fair? Good, because being fair is, guess what? A character trait. Let's create a list of words that we could use to describe some of the people in our lives. Think about your mom. If you had to describe your mom or if you had to tell someone what kind of person your mom was, what would you say? What word would you use? When I think about mommies, I think about someone that is caring, that's loving, and they take care of me. They take care of us. So I would put that my mommy is caring. Now let's think about daddies. If you had to describe your daddy, how would you describe him? I would describe my daddy as somebody that's silly. <laughs> my daddy is silly. Now, let's think about your siblings, your brothers, or your sisters? How would you describe them? Do they play fair? Are they honest? <laughs> Sometimes my brother can be honest. So I'm gonna put honest. Now, let's think about our best friend. How would you describe your best friend? Are they fun? <laughs> my best friend is fun. I'm gonna write down fun. Now, let's think about our teachers. How would you describe your teacher? Are they funny? Are they nice? Are they loving? I'm nice, so I'm gonna write nice on our list. So the words that we use to describe some of the people in our lives are silly, caring, honest, fun, and nice. All of these words our character traits. Let's use the characters from our story last week, Lion and Mouse, and let's try to find their character traits. Lion lay asleep on a sunny afternoon. Mouse was hurrying home through the tall grass. She stumbled upon Lion and woke him. Lion trapped Mouse under his huge paw. He lifted her by the tail and swung her slowly through the air. An afternoon snack, Lion said, delightful. Mouse felt his hot breath on her fur. She was so scared. Her voice was just a squeak. Spare me, she cried, and one day I will help you in return. 
Lion laughed loudly. Mouse trembled. You help me? He laughed. You are a funny little one. Still, he let Mouse go. He soon dozed off again under the hot sun. Mouse dashed home. She was happy to be alive. The day came when Lion stepped into a hunter's net. He was trapped. Lion struggled. The net pulled tighter. Lion roared in anger. Then he roared in fear. His loud roar carried in every direction. Many animals heard him. None came to help him. None dared to free Lion except Mouse. Mouse ran to Lion's side. She found him in the trap. Mouse chewed away the net with her sharp little teeth. Before long, Lion was free. Lion shook off the ropes. He looked deep into Mouse's eyes. Thank you, little friend, Lion said. You are most welcome, big friend, Mouse replied. What you give is what you get. Mouse's words still hold true today. What is just as true? That even a little mouse can help a mighty lion. What words would you use to describe them? Think about it for a second and take a look at these pictures. Take a look at this picture. What kind of person do you think the lion is? <laughs> I would say he's kind of scary. What about you? Now, take a look at this picture. What kind of person do you think the mousey is? I think she's pretty nice. I mean, she did help the lion get out of the net, right? Take a look at this picture and think about how you think the lion is treating the mouse now that she helped him. He's being friendly, right? Lion's character trait changed at the end of the story because of how mouse treated him. And that's okay. All right, let's review. Remember, a character trait is a word that we would use to describe a person or a character in the story. Remember, characters can change and become better people, and so can you. Thanks for watching. See you next week. But don't leave. Stay tuned for Math with Miss Barnes. Hey, mathematicians. Welcome to class today. I'm Miss Barnes, and this is your math lesson. Our objective today is I can solve addition problems by putting two groups of objects together. So today we are going to be working with questions that ask us to put two groups of objects together in order to find the sum. The sum is the answer to an addition problem. Today the only materials you'll need for our lesson are counters. That just means any object that you have around your house that is safe to use and that you can use to count. That will aid you in our lesson today. So grab something really quickly that will help you count. If you don't have anything, that's okay because we're going to use models on our screen today. So take a moment now, grab your tools, and let's get ready to learn. We are going to be talking about two problems. They're both going to be story problems. So the first thing we have to do is read the story from start to finish. Then we'll talk about the next steps. Let's read together. While walking, I saw two birds flying. Then I saw four red birds sitting in a tree. How many birds did I see? So now let's think about that. The first part says, I saw two birds flying. Then I saw four red birds sitting in a tree. 
And the question says, how many birds did I see? So I'm going to take my highlighter tool and I'm going to highlight the question that we are going to answer today. And the question that we are going to answer today is how many birds did I see? If that is our question, the first thing we have to do is we have to write an answer statement. I saw blank birds. Now this blank down here at the bottom of your screen, this one right here, this blank just says that we don't know how many birds I've seen yet, we have to count them. So now let's go back to the problem. While walking, I saw two birds flying. I'm gonna stop there. So I'm gonna take the two birds and I'm going to make them fly. So here's one bird flying and there's two birds flying. The next sentence says, then I saw four red birds sitting in a tree. So I take my red birds and we're going to move them to the tree. One, two, three, and four. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to count and we have to add. So the first thing I'm going to count is this group of birds that are flying. How many birds are flying? I see one bird flying and two birds flying. So down here, I'm going to write two. That's how many birds are flying. And then I'm going to write an addition sign. Addition sign means we're going to put them together. Okay, so when we're saying this out loud, we're going to say two and and we'll fill that out as we keep going. Are you ready for the next part? So the next part says, then I saw four red birds sitting in a tree. So we can think about the problem or we can count this group of red birds sitting in the tree. And we know that there are four red birds in the tree. And if you don't remember that from the problem, you can count them. So I have four red birds sitting in the tree. So two and four, and then we have to write an equal sign. A equal sign we can say with the word is. So two and four is, and then we have to think about putting them together. So let's go back up to our drawing. I'm just going to erase what we have up there. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is count all of the birds together. So I'm going to try and write the numbers as we count. You may not be able to see them. So here's one red bird. So there's one red bird, two, three, switch to white, four, then we have to count the other birds as well, but we have to count on four. So we stopped at four. This bird over here is five, and the bird underneath is six. So now I know that two and four is six. So let's finish our addition sentence. Our addition sentence says two plus four equals, and what does two plus four equal? Well, that's right, we said it was six, great. The last step is we have to answer our question. Do you remember what our question was? Let's go back to the problem and remember I highlighted it in yellow and let's read it again. So this says, how many birds did I see? And we know from all of our counting and adding that I saw six birds. So in your answer statement at the bottom of the screen, we're just going to fill six in because I saw six birds. Great job on that problem. That took a lot of brain power. Are you ready for the second one? 
I'm going to clear all my drawings here and let's go to the next problem. Remember, when we have a word problem, the first thing we have to do is what? That's right, we have to read it from the start to the finish. So I'm going to read this to you and I want you to listen for numbers that we might want to put together, groups of objects that can be put together. Are you ready? On the counter, there are some cupcakes. Three cupcakes have chocolate frosting and five cupcakes have vanilla frosting. How many cupcakes are there? So let's check your listening. Do you know what we're comparing and what we're putting together? What types of objects are we working with in this problem? If you said cupcakes, you're spot on. Great job, we're working with cupcakes. So we know that the, after we read it, then we have to find our question and write our answer statement. So let's look for the question. Remember that a question ends in a question mark. So the question here looks to me like, how many cupcakes are there? That, that tells me that they want to know how many cupcakes there are in all. So I need to count all of the cupcakes on the counter. Now that we know what question we're answering, let's write our statement. There are blank cupcakes. And remember that blank goes there because we don't know how many there are yet. We still have to count them. Now we're going to make a model. So my problem says three cupcakes, three cupcakes have chocolate frosting. So I'm going to find my chocolate cupcake. Here's my chocolate frosting and I'm going to put three on the counter. Two and three. Great. The line continues with there are five cupcakes that have vanilla frosting. So I'm going to get my cupcakes that have vanilla frosting and I'm going to move those over as well. Ready? Count with me. One vanilla, two vanilla, three vanilla, four vanilla. We've got to squeeze one more in here. Five vanilla. And we're just gonna take these and get them out of the way so that they don't confuse us. So the top row has three chocolate frosted cupcakes. The bottom row has five vanilla frosted cupcakes. <clears throat> How many cupcakes are there in all? So I'm gonna pull my drawing tool back out. And in order to find how many cupcakes there are in all, I really need to count the individual groups and put them together. So we know that there are one, two, three chocolate frosted cupcakes, so three, and how many vanilla frosted cupcakes do you see on your screen? I count one, two, three, four, five. So three and five is how many? How many cupcakes do you see in all? Can you count them? Let's start from the bottom. So we know there are five vanilla frosted cupcakes. So five count on with me. Five, six, seven, eight. That means that there are eight total cupcakes. Three and five is eight. Great job today, boys and girls. I hope you learned a lot about putting together groups of objects in order to find the sum. Next up is science with Ms. Schumacher. See you next week. Hello, my name is Ms. Schumacher and this is science class for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. Today, we are going to study the seasons. Let's get started. You will need your observation eyes and your thinking brains. If you can, I would highly suggest making a science journal. You'll need writing tools. You could also use a camera or a magazine today with glue and make a season's collage. 
Let's get started and I'll show you how to use these things. Last week, we learned who a weather expert is. Do you remember who a weather expert is? A weather expert is called a meteorologist. That's right. A meteorologist is someone who studies the weather. As junior meteorologist, your job last week was to start thinking about the weather. Let's check in with some of our junior scientists from across the metro and see how their week looked. Yesterday I absorbed three times. In the morning, no sun is cold. And in the afternoon, the sun Start coming out and it's getting a little bit warmer. During at night, it got cold. Temperature dropped. I can see the moon coming out. A cloud cover it. A meteorologist studies weather. The four seasons have distinct weather in the Midwest. It is time to think about the seasons. Do you know how many seasons there are? Did you say four? That's right. How many seasons are there? There are four seasons. Do you know them? Let's say the seasons together. Are you ready? Winter. Spring, summer, fall. We know there are four seasons. Now it's time as junior scientists to close our eyes and visualize. If you are someone who likes to draw, now would be a time that you could sketch. As you're thinking, put it down through your fingers and onto the paper. That's one way to show your thinking as a scientist. But for me, I'm just going to think in my brain. I'm going to think about what I feel, what I would see, what I would smell, what I could hear, and maybe even what I could taste during the different seasons right now. Let's close our eyes and visualize what happens during the winter. What did you visualize would happen in the season of winter? Brr! Look at what I thought about. I thought about my dog, Bonnie. There she is. Bonnie's in her dog sweater because she's in the snow. And look, there's Miss Schumacher's junior scientists, Lillian and Juniper. Juniper's about ready to throw a snowball and Lillian's ready to go sledding. What did you think about when you thought about what you would do in the season of winter? What's next? After winter comes, do you remember? It's going to start getting warmer. The birds are going to start coming back to Missouri. It will be spring. Close your eyes, junior scientists, and visualize what you like to do in the spring. Junior scientists, what did you think about when you think about the springtime? I thought about bike rides. I love to go to the park and ride my bike to get there. At the park in the spring, I start to notice that the flowers are growing and butterflies are out. Are you ready to visualize? That means you are going to think about 
what you like to do in the season of summer. And your scientist, what do you think about when you think about the season of summer? One thing I've noticed is that my scientific brain always thinks about doing something outside. That's right. When we talk about the seasons, we have to think about going outside. Take a look at this season. It's the summer. During the summer, it gets hot in the Midwest. That's right. Miss Schumacher loves to go to the pool and take a look over there. That junior scientist loves to get warm in the sun during the summer. What's next? We went from summer. It is now time for the fall. Think about what you will be doing in the fall time. Here we go. Close your eyes and let's visualize what happens in the fall. Junior scientist, what did you visualize happening during the season of fall. Another word for fall is autumn. What do you like to do in the fall? Do you like to throw leaves in the air? Do you like to huddle around a fire and maybe cook s'mores? Things change in the fall. It gets cooler. Let's check in with a junior scientist from across the metro. I like all the seasons. My favorite thing to do in um, the winter, in the snow, is snowball fights and, and sledding. I really like in the summer is, is going to the pool with my family. What I really like to do is play in our sprinkler. And in the spring, we, let, we take care of mom's roses. I can create a scientific collage to show my understanding of the seasons. Junior scientist, one way that we can show our understanding of the seasons is by making a collage. How will you show characteristics of each season? The first thing that I'm going to do to create my collage is to label each page. If I'm going to do it in a journal, I'm going to label each page a different season. Winter, wuh. Even if I just get down the first sound, wuh. That's perfect. That is very good scientific writing. Win. But I might hear more sounds. Win. Tur. There's winter. I might just have that. In winter, I am going to ask my adult if I can borrow their magazines or use a newspaper and find images that represent winter. Take a look at what I have found. I am going to use tape and put these in my journal. Take a look at my scientific journal. Now I have represented winter. One thing I would suggest is if you have pictures that you have printed, you might look and see if any of them are outside. If they are, you could look and say, I know there's evidence of spring. The leaves are turned, have turned green again. And look, there's Miss Schumacher in short sleeves. Thank you for learning science today with Miss Schumacher. It's time for you to head over to physical education with Coach H. I will see you next week. Goodbye. Hi boys and girls, it's Coach H and we are ready for our PE session. So let's get started. Alrighty, what we're gonna need today is you guys are gonna need to get a jump rope, be in an open space, and if you can, I would probably try to go outside, but since outside right now for me is kind of gloomy, I'm gonna stay inside. But if you can go outside, go outside when doing these jump rope activities. 
Now, um, the other thing you're also going to need is a water bottle, okay? Because we're going to be jumping a lot. So you know what? That's going to bring our heart rate up a lot. We're going to be breathing really heavy. Just make sure you have a water bottle nearby so when you need to take a break, you can go take a break. And you can take a break at any time that you need to during these exercises. So let's get started. So, and I forgot to mention, this is for pre-K and kindergarten, but anybody is welcome. So let's go ahead and get started with the jump rope. So I got my jump rope here. I'm gonna bring it out. Now, if you don't know how to jump rope, that's okay. That is my job to teach you today. So I want you to do, so I want you to take that jump rope, stretch it out just a little bit, and I want you to set it on the floor, just like that. Now, when you set it on the floor, I want you guys to jump over it and back. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that 20 times. So I want you to bring it forward and we're gonna jump back, okay? So here we go. Jump forward and back, and that would be one. And I'm gonna go pretty quick, so I want you to follow. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Nice job, keep it up. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice job. Now, it's okay to hit the jump rope with your feet just a couple of times, but make sure that you are jumping over the jump rope, okay? Now, the next thing I want you guys to do is I want you to stretch that jump rope out and we're gonna make sure it's the right size for you. So you're gonna step on the jump rope, have the handlebars equally apart just like this. When you do that, I want you to see where the jump rope leads. If it's right next to your hips, it's perfect. If it's all the way up here next to your shoulders, not a good spot for your jump rope. So if it is, why don't you take it and just wrap it around your hands just like that, okay, to bring it up. But mine was just the right size, so I'm gonna bring it down. If it was too small and it's next to your knees, too small of a jump rope. So I want you guys to have a jump rope that is about hip high, okay? Now, what we're gonna do next is I want you to take the jump rope and I want you to throw the jump rope behind your back, okay? You don't have to do anything fancy, but what I want you to do is I want you to throw the jump rope in front of you and let it hit your feet, just like that. Now we just practiced something. We're gonna jump over the part of the black jump rope, so we're gonna jump over just like that. Awesome job. Once we jumped over it, we're gonna do that again. So I want you to throw the jump rope in front of you, let it hit your feet, okay? And then jump over. Okay, now I want some key points here. When I'm throwing the jump rope up, make sure that your hands are going up really high like this. So I throw it up, let it hit my feet, just like that. Okay, so we're gonna do that a couple times. I want you guys to try to do it at least 10 times. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm gonna jump over it, bring it up to my feet. That's one, jump. Jump, two, nice job. Jump, three. Jump, four, make sure you bring it up high. Oop, and I accidentally just jumped with that one. So, and that's just my mindset of just making sure I jump over it. But when you're doing it, have it in front of your feet, then jump, okay? Try it again, throw it in front, nice job. We're gonna say that one was six. Jump over, bring it to your feet. That's seven, jump. Bring it to your feet, eight. Bring it to your feet, nine. Bring it to your feet, 10, awesome job. Now, the next step is gonna be the tricky one. What I want you guys to notice is when we were throwing it up, you don't wanna jump right here because the jump rope's still up high, just like that. So when it jumps, when you jump, I want you to bring it forward and when your hands are in front of you like this, that's when you're gonna jump, okay? So we're gonna practice that real quick. I want you to throw it up in the air, Jump, nice job, okay? Make sure you don't jump when it's right up here because you're not gonna be able to jump over the jump rope. You want it, your hands down here, and then you jump, okay? Let's try that one more time. There goes the jump rope and jump. Nice job. Let's try that one more time. I'm gonna jump over the black jump rope again. Here we go. Throw it over and jump. Nice job. Now, if you're still struggling at home, I want you guys to go back to those steps I did. Either you put the jump rope on the ground, you take it like this, set it on the ground, or you're gonna start where I did the, the second step, is I want you to throw the jump rope really high, let it hit your feet, then jump, okay? 
I'm going to do one more time the third step. The third step is I throw it up, let it hit my feet, and then jump. Just like that, okay? Now I want you guys, if you can, try to do 10 of those. So I want you to take the jump rope, throw it in front, and then jump. And don't go super fast. Don't go like this and try to go as fast as you can. Go as slow as you can, throw the jump rope as high as you can, and then bring it down. Just like that, nice job. We're gonna do it maybe four more times here. Let's go ahead. One, two, three, four. Nice job. Let's go ahead and get a drink of water. <clears throat> Whew. Go ahead and set that jump rope down. You guys did a fantastic job. Whew. And man, I am feeling this workout. And you know what? Jump Rope for Heart. Has anybody heard of Jump Rope for Heart? It is an excellent program. Jump Rope for Heart helps out kids that need help with some of their heart problems that they have. And when we help donate anything to Jump Rope for Heart, it helps the kids that can't have a heart get a heart from donations from us. So go ahead and make sure when you are thinking about jump roping and doing all that, look into those programs and help out the organization, the community around you. Let's go ahead and keep getting a drink of water. Whew, man, I am having a great workout today. All right, now, another thing I want us to do is I want us to do some breathing treatment. So I want you guys to breathe in, and then breathe out. And remember, I want you to hold it for a couple seconds, and then exhale a couple seconds. So let's go ahead and breathe in again, and then breathe out. Nice job. Go ahead, breathe in again and breathe out. Nice job. All right, we're gonna do that set one more time. We're gonna go through it quickly. I'm not gonna talk about the steps very much. I'm just gonna show you the steps and I want you to follow up with me, okay? Remember, if you are not getting one of those steps, don't get upset. It takes time, it takes practice. You gotta make sure that you're practicing at home and then you're gonna make sure that you're an awesome jump roper, okay? So let's go ahead, grab that jump rope. And I think the first step I said was to Set it on the ground. So I want you to stretch that jump rope. Set it on the ground. I want you to do it 10 times. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Nice job. All righty. Next step. Second step, I want you to take that jump rope, take it behind your back, throw it in front, let it hit your feet, and jump. We're going to do 10 of those. Here we go. Throw it, jump. Oop, and sometimes you mess up like that, so just redo it. Throw it. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Nice job. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Nice job. All right, now we're on our final step. When we bring our hands up, right in front of us, we're gonna jump. So let's go ahead, we're gonna do 10. Here we go. Throw it up high. One, two, three, four. Oop, sometimes you mess up just like that. Just go ahead and restart. Three, whoop, there I go again, messing up. And sometimes it does hit the back of your head. It's okay, you're gonna be all right. Let's go ahead and keep going. Four, whoo. Woo, I am getting tired and I can't even throw my jump rope over my head. Being silly here. Let's try it one more time and you know what? I'm gonna start back at one. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Nice job. And this jump rope is wanting to attack me. Woo. Gotta tame it, bring it down, just like that. And that's a good way to put up your jump rope. Now Make sure, and I forgot to talk about some of these safety rules. These jump ropes are not for just going around and whipping and doing all that. We're not doing that. So don't go find your siblings and do all that and just go Not okay. This hurts. We're not wanting to hurt others, okay? So make sure we fold it up and use it as an awesome instrument for physical education. Nice job. Thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Hopefully we'll see you guys again. Thank you again and I'll see you next week. Hola, buenos días y bienvenido a la clase de español. 
Welcome to the class of Spanish. I am Miss Ellis, and today we're going to learn about the Spanish alphabet. So if you're ready to learn, go ahead and follow me to my classroom. Again, my name is Miss Ellis, and we're going to talk about the Spanish alphabet for pre-K through kindergarten. So let's get started. So there are 27 letters that make up the Spanish alphabet, and I want to look through these letters, and then we'll do some practice with some actual words in Spanish. So while I pronounce each letter, I want you all to repeat after me. So here we have our letters of the Spanish alphabet. So again, after I say each letter, just repeat after me, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, K, H, the H is silent in Spanish, E, J, K, L, M, N, N, Y, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. You'll realize that there are two additional letters here that are prevalent or do show up in the Spanish language. So repeat. And then we've got a y. Those are the two L's. A y. So now let's try to pronounce these letters with some pictures. Are you ready? So first we have a, avión. Repeat, avión, which is an airplane. We have b, bota. Repeat, bota, which is a boot. C for casa. Repeat, casa. If you guess it's a house, you're correct. We have that ch sound again. Chocolate. Repeat. Chocolate. Chocolate. De for dedo. Dedo is your finger. A for elefante. Repeat. Elefante. For an elephant. F. For fuego, repeat, fuego, which is fire. K for gato, gato, gato is a cat. H, remember our H is silent, so repeat, hielo, hielo, which is ice. E, Pronounce after me, Isla, Isla, which is an island. Jota, Joya, repeat, Joya. This means jewelry. Ka, for kimono, repeat, kimono. A kimono is what you see in that picture. She's wearing a Kimono. Then we have L. Repeat. Limon. Limon. So if you've ever had a lemon and it was sour, limon. That's what that is. Now we have A. A. So repeat. Yama. Yama. If you guessed a llama, you're correct. M A, repeat, mono, mono. A mono is a monkey. 
N stands for noticias. Repeat, noticias, which is the news. N Y for niño. Repeat, niño. Niño means a kid. O for ojo. Ojo. Your ojo is your eye. Pe for papa. Repeat, papa. Papa is your dad. Ku for queso. Repeat, queso. Cheese. Now we have R. Repeat, rosa. Rosa. This is a rose in English. Now we have S. Repeat, amigos. Amigos. Amigos are friends. T for tigre. Tigre is a tiger. So if you see the photo, it's a tiger. U for uno, like number one, uno. V for vaso. Repeat, vaso. Vaso is a glass. Doble V. Repeat, kiwi. Kiwi. So this is a tropical fruit, a kiwi. X. Repeat, taxi. Taxi. This is similar to a taxi, a taxi cab in English. Repeat, yay. Yay. Then the word is yema. Repeat, yema. This is what your eggs look like before you eat them. Yema. And lastly, seta for zapato. Repeat, zapato. Zapatos are shoes. Thank you all for joining me in the Spanish lesson today. I hope that you learned so much and we will continue learning next week, okay? I'll see you Monday. Thank you to all the classroom teachers today. They will all be back next Monday with lessons targeted again for your pre-K and kindergarten students. Tomorrow, Tuesday, tune in for lessons for grades first and second. Thank you all for joining us on KCPS Homeroom. Have a great day and remember, continue learning throughout the day.
Hello, we're happy to have you visit Carver. We are a dual language school where our students become truly bilingual and biliterate. Welcome to Carver Dual Language. Carver. Welcome to first grade in Carver. In kindergarten and first grade, all students learn to read and write in Spanish. Welcome to fourth grade at Carver. In fourth grade, our students have the opportunity to join our robotics team. Our students work together on a community project and learn to code a robot's movements. By sixth grade, Carver students are truly bilingual and biliterate. Students can fluently speak, read, and write in both Spanish and English. Carver students move on to much success in middle school, high school, and beyond. We celebrate Hispanic heritage throughout the year at Carver Dual Language. Each year, students develop a plan to make goods to develop and to sell at our Mercado. This is our annual fall market that classes have booths that students come together and sell their items that they've created. Staff, community members, family, parents, grandparents, all can come together, buy the goods, and celebrate Hispanic heritage together. In Carver, we have an involved PTA where parents and families can be part of our school community. Thank you for joining us on this tour. If you would like to schedule a personal tour or learn more about our school, please call 816-418-4925.